Good afternoon to everyone. It's an honor for us to be here with you today. And first of all, we're going to present a video that the UN Envoy on Youth will share some inspiring words with us today. Excellencies, dear colleagues, fellow young people, we cannot transform education without young people engaged in a meaningful, diverse and effective manner as full-fledged partners every step of the way. As we have seen throughout the last three days, young people have the drive, commitment, innovative ideas and expertise to work alongside their governments, civil society, the private sector and international organizations like the UN. Involving young people in all decisions impacting their lives, livelihoods and futures is not something nice we can do for them. It is their fundamental right and we must ensure that they have a seat at the table. This is why United Nations and partners have come together to ensure that young people's views, their recommendations and their commitments on transforming education are not only heard, but taken into account in the Transforming Education Summit process. The collective voice of young people will be captured in a youth declaration as their input to the Transforming Education Summit chair summary that will be launched in New York in September. My office is a proud member of a youth-led partnership from within and outside the United Nations established under the overall leadership of the Transforming Education Summit Secretariat, which is working on the Youth Declaration. I urge everyone here today to support the Youth Declaration process, which will continue in the coming months leading up to September. I also encourage governments convening national consultations to ensure young people are meaningfully involved in those consultations. In my role as the UN Secretary General's Envoy on Youth, I have repeatedly heard from young people that investing in their education is investing in their future. With young people around the world disproportionately impacted by multifaceted crises like COVID-19, the climate crisis, conflicts, growing inequalities and more, transforming education with and for youth is more important than ever. It is the key to ensuring we break through these current challenges and build a more just, equal, sustainable and peaceful world for people and for the planet. I thank you and over to the young leaders driving this process. Thank you, Yahadma, for your powerful message about the real role of young people in the transforming education and in the process leading up to September. This message summed up perfectly what has been discussed during the three days of the pre-summit. And now I would like with you going deeper of what we need to do for September because these days have been a platform to underline in which direction we need to go. The Youth Declaration is an initiative as the UN Envoy on Youth just mentioned, is an initiative that is led by the Office of the Secretary General, Envoy on Youth, and also the UNESCO SDG for Youth Network. And this declaration is really important because it will encapture the voices of young people. What we think is the priorities in order to transform education and what are the commitments we need for our governments, for our countries, for our regions to, to do in order to ensure access to quality education for everyone. And in these consultations, uh, for the youth declaration that is going to be presented on September, there's not only going to be a process of youth consultations, but also are going to have in being ha consider other consultations that already took place in order to include the voices of more young people. Yesterday, we have the first in-person consultation leading up to this process of creating the youth declaration. 
Yesterday, I had the honor of be being part of that consultation of hearing of young people from all over the world that are changing their communities and that are creating an impactful and positive change in order to ensure everyone can access education. And if I can share with you the three takeaways of this consultation are the following ones. First of all, we as young people, we need, for us it's really important to be an accountability mechanism in order so we can keep track and we can see how are the advances that are being made when it comes to the commitments that the ministers, the governments, and the stakeholders that are here today are making in order to transform education. Second of all, we, all of us, we agree on the importance of young people to be part of the process of transforming education. Because one thing is we as young people to be here, to participate in panels, to have the chance to to make our voices heard, but another really different thing is for us to be part of the process. And we have to be part of the process of transforming education. Because if the pandemic told us, taught us something, it was that the educational policies were failing us, that it was the ones that were promoted during the past years. And one of the reasons why these educational policies weren't enough to address the, the pandemic and the problems that came with it. It was because youth, young people weren't invited in the creation of this education, those educational policies. And the third ta key takeaway I can highlight about our youth consultation yesterday is that we all agree that we need more financing on education because we can present a lot of different solutions of the different action tracks, but all of them need finance in order to create structural changes. The other day, one of the ministers said that when we're talking about rights, we need to talk about budget. And that has to happen if we really need, if we really want and are aiming to a, a deeper transformation. And most of all to ensure access to education for every children and young people, doesn't matter where they come from or the socioeconomic level of their families. So it's really important, I really thank all the young people that participated yesterday on the youth consultation, but it's really important for us as young people to keep engaged in this process of leading up to September and in the creation of the youth declaration but it's also important, what are we going to do when we go back to our countries? We discussed this too yesterday, because we need to create a global movement if we really want to create a new social contract for education. And in order for us young people to be here, we need to be louder. That's why it's really important, I want to give a message now for young people that's really important, not what we just we do today, but also what we do when we come back to our communities. What can we do to make information about education more accessible? What can we do to, for young people to understand what's happening when it comes to education, the situation when it comes to education in their countries, in their regions, what are the priorities, why this affects us all? For, their, for them to join our movement. But also it's really important to, for stakeholders and ministers to include young people. And this then, now is when I want to make emphasis on something that the UN Youth Embod say about youth being part of the national consultations. Of the national consultations. And it's really important for us to be included because those takeaways of the national consultation that are going to be presented in September has to highlight what are the priorities and the changes we need, all the countries need, in order to, to really be able to achieve SDG 4. And I've heard also today talking with a lot of young people that, one is, that was one of the main concerns they have. 
they keep asking me, Sofia, do you know when the youth national consultations are in my country? Do you know if they already happen or when they would take place? Do you know if they will include young people? And unfortunately, I don't have the answer for all of those questions. I would really like to, but I don't. So I urge you now that I have this incredible platform to be heard by you to please include young people because in order to transform education, we need to be at the table. Also, <laughs> also during the first day on the Youth Forum, one of the panelists said, if we don't include young people, we won't get very far. And uh, we've already been in that way, in that path. So we need to do things different this time. I also like to, to add that in this process for the youth declaration and in the youth consultation, we thought that it was really important to have a youth consultation here in person with all, all of the incredible young people that attended the pre-summit. But it's also really important to include more young people, the voices of more young people because our voices are pretty, are very di diverse, but also as many of the young people that were in this stage the past few days, all of them acknowledge that we are privileged young people that have the incredible opportunity to be heard by you, to ensure our voices are being heard and are included in meaningful conversations. So why is this? consultations are going to be online for young people from all over the world that doesn't have the same privilege as we do to be part of these, these consultations and to ensure their voices are being heard and are imprinted on the youth declaration to be presented in September. And in order for me to finish, uh, the, the last thing I want to say is that also it's really important you now I got the chance to be heard by you, stakeholders, ministers of education, parts of your government, and you have our future in your hands. Literally, you have the power of creating structural changes, change the course, save us for this educational crisis we are living, and save the future of an entire generation, or generation. Now I'll give the floor to my colleague Doris. Hello. 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 <laughs> yes. My name is Doris Mikali, and I'm the youth and student representative to the High Level Steering Committee Shepherd Group. Uh, Sophia has been discussing about the importance of the youth declaration. And I'm here to discuss about and ask you, do you know what meaningful youth engagement looks like? I know Mr. S uh, Minister Senge was talking about it and he talked about young people being act in the actual table discussing issues with the ministers. But I'm, I'm, I'm scared if you guys have been seeing young people, have you just been seeing us taking pictures with the UNESCO backdrops? Have you talked to us? Do you even know we are here? <laughs> do you know we are here? <laughs> We've just been seeing uh, young people taking pictures. Uh, and that's what we, I want to discuss today. What does meaningful youth engagement look like? And in the context of the Transforming Education Summit, that's what I want to focus on and that, how that plays into the youth declaration that Sophia has talked about and how ministers of education could support us in that process and support the youth declaration. Um, I just want to say that I ho I, I'm, I'm hoping somebody's gonna come and do um, some performance. During the first day of the youth consultation, we had a dance. I remember seeing Stefani breaking some moves. <laughs> I don't know why the last two days has a bit been dull. I don't know, you guys, are we gonna have a performance? Are you gonna surprise us? Are we gonna have a performance, Sophia? <laughs> We're not very sure, but we are hoping. We're having our fingers are crossed. Maybe you guys are gonna dance. Uh, you're not, half of you are not even smiling. I wish you guys smiled so that you can encourage me to continue. Nobody's smiling, only Mr. Senge is smiling, Stefani is smiling. Um, Yes, yeah, so I want to discuss what meaningful youth engagement looks like. Over the last three days, young people have a plan on how we want to be engaged in the next, uh, in the process leading towards the summit. We have a picture and I want to paint that picture to you. 
Uh, so within the, uh, the, the process of the Transforming Education Summit, we have the national consultations and we have the five action tracks. Uh, over the last three days, young people have been talking to me and as Sophia has said, it is not very clear how ministers of education from different countries want young people to be involved in the national consultations. We are yet to see ministers of education clearly pointing a picture for us on how we can plug in into the national constitution to speak about the issues that are important for young people in transforming education. So um, I met young people from the delegation of Portugal, Canada, and Venezuela, and they are doing a fantastic job. I'm sure other ministers are doing, but I'm just going to speak about the young people that I got to meet. Uh, the Portugal delegation has young people as young as 15 who understands the action tracks young people that want to be engaged in terms of their priorities within the five action tracks, young people that are so committed that after this particular summit, they're going to start a podcast to go and discuss what we did in the youth consultations and to go localize the process of the consultations for the youth declaration. It is five young people from different regions in Portugal. They're each going to go back to their districts. They understand their privilege to even discuss this particular process with young people that are not even part of this Paris um, Youth Summit, or young people don't even know that the Transforming Education Summit is currently ongoing in Paris. So it is very important for ministers of education to localize the process of the national consultation in terms of youth engagement. Young people, as Sophia has said, have different and varied experiences. In countries, we have young people that are refugees, young people that are not able to access education due to the digital divide, young people that are not able to access education because of their gender, young people that are not able to access education because of the climate crisis. So when you're engaging young people, it needs to be able to show the lived experiences of different young people. And that's why it's important to localize the national consultations. You need to go back to the community where there are no schools, the, the accessibility of education is a problem. You need to go back um, to the communities where young people do not even understand really or do not feel that the education system in that specific country works for them. And that's how you're able to get a youth declaration uh, or a youth delegation that is representative of all young people. Any young person that has come to Paris today is a privileged young person. Privileged to access to visa, privileged to access to a flight ticket, privileged to afford the very expensive hotels in Paris. So <laughs> you need to go back to the communities and ask the young people that are not here, what are their priorities in education? I am going to go back to Kenya, try to go back to my village. <laughs> Thank you for clapping, I was very nervous. I feel very encouraged, I'm just gonna go on. <laughs> uh, young people that are, you are very privileged and I, I like our generation, we are always uh, recognizing our privilege. But I say during the first day of the uh, youth forum that we need to stop saying that but doing something about our privilege. It needs to be very action oriented. When you uh, recognize your privilege, you need to do something about it. So it is very important when you're doing the national consultations to also localize it in terms of getting data on youth priorities for it to feed into the youth declaration. And ministers of education, please do support the youth declaration process. I reach out to, I think Sophia, <laughs> Sophia and I are leading, and even UNESCO is supporting us in the process of the youth declaration. The UN Envoy on Youth is supporting us. Reach out to us and tell us what are the young people in your specific context? What do they want to see in the declaration that is going to feed into the overall summit declaration? in terms of youth priorities. Reach out to us, we want to hear what young people want to say in China, we want to hear what young people want to say in Cote d'Ivoire, what young people are going to say in Kenya. We want it to be inclusive because uh, unfortunately, young people, we don't have a structure of elections, so sometimes we don't have true representation. So it is back to the ministers to ensure there's true representation in terms of uh, youth priorities. So please ensure that you're um, localizing the national consultation and uh, consulting young people in the national consultation on the specific action tracks. I had notes, so I need to say one more thing. In terms of what we want to see in New York, I think it's something that I have observed and a lot of young people have observed. Uh, the ministers here today had a lot of round tables. There are some rooms that were closed. We're just seeing you guys enter into some rooms. We don't know whether you're, what you're talking about. There are some rooms we are allowed, some rooms we, we, are, we don't know exactly what is happening. So it is important that in New York, we don't have a youth day and a day where ministers and very important people meet to discuss education. We need to be part of...
On the first day, we had a fantastic day. We had the magic system. We danced. It was lovely. We were very excited. On the second day, we <laughs> were very unaware what was happening. <laughs> we just saw a lot of people in black suits who filled this room, and the mood changed. <laughs> and we're like, do they know we are here? <laughs> so next time in New York, we can carry your bags. <laughs> just bring us to the room. We can carry your bags. We can. <laughs> 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 so we want to be part of the conversations in New York. You were talking about um, digital transformation. You were talking about supporting teachers. There are young people that are working on those specific issues, young people that have been working and participating in the consultations of the action track. You could imagine if every minister of education here today brought one young person that is a true representation of young people working in that specific space. You'd have a delegation of young people, one who is coming to advocate for youth priorities as teachers, a young person coming to advocate for youth priori uh, priorities in digital transformation, a young person advocating for young people in climate education. Then we'd have a true youth movement. I have seen that um, the deputy secretary for the United Nations, as I think it was on Twitter, and she said that there is no true transformation of education without young people. We are 15% of the population, and the political will is with us. We are the people that, we are the people that vote. We are the people that are the next future. If you don't include us, you're creating another system that is not representative of our needs. So you need to stop allowing us to have one day, confusing us with the dance, and then coming for the two days to actually make the decisions. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed it. I, I, I really enjoyed the music. It was very nice. I was dancing. It was lovely. But we need to have more of that and also bring that energy into your rooms. We need to bring that energy to the ministerial conferences. Were you guys bored? We could bring that energy. Can you see all the energy I have? Imagine all those young people in the ministerial conference talking about innovative ideas, you know, challenging the status quo, challenging what is not working within education. You need that energy. You need to include young people. So please bring young people, support young people to come to the de your delegations in New York. Oh. I have one more thing that um, I'm, a, I'm not worried about, but one more thing that we talked about during the youth forum. We should not be speaking in silos. I feel like everybody in this specific room work works in education, but the education crisis cannot just be addressed by the people that work within the education sector. We need other people that are outside the sector to help us address the crisis adequately. So, and it's only, thank you, and it's only young people that can get that message out in a creative way. We can, we have time, we can do TikTok lives. Uh, is that TikTok live? I think I'm going old. Uh, we can do Instagram lives, we can tweet about, we can get this message out. I know the High Level Steering Committee has a message, a, a call to action to get heads of governments to invest in education. Young people are committed to getting that message out. It is a one pager, they're committed to ensuring that everybody in the world knows what happened here and ensuring that everybody understands the urgent crisis in education. So for you to put out that message out, for you to get the ministers of education to put education as a priority in, them, in their financing budgets, you need to have young people to get that message out. You cannot be saying it's a crisis, it's everybody who is kinda, uh, not numb really, that was already used of saying it's a crisis. We need people in the communities understanding what is happening in the, in the education sector so that we can have more political momentum and more political um, commitments towards education in New York. So I've checked my notes and yeah, I'm done. Please include young people. I wish there was a dance. If it was a youth forum, there would be a dance, but there's no dance. <laughs> Apparently, no. <laughs> Thank you. Are we done? Yes. How many minutes was that?